and I've been talking with my camera off. <laughs> so the sound may be good, but I've been talking with my camera off. Anyway, stress pays today. We've looked at reels, hornpipes, jigs, slip jigs, which are things of in nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And today we're going to look at stress pays, which use the dotted rhythms of the hornpipe which use the triplet thing, which happens often inside the feel of a, of a jig. And we have the reverse thing, which is the short long thing. <clears throat> I want to demonstrate that first on uh, it's on a tune called Mary or Mari's wedding, depending on, which Gaelic speaker you're talking to. side of my hammers this time we have the short walk, 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 snap that short long reverses the thing that started it off the short long that happens just a couple of times and that's a that's an ornament that's called a snap where you take the long short of a hornpipe and flip it upside down and in that place it stands out and i think that's a good accessible way to get started on what stress bays are because the snap is a key to a stress bay. Some ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Let's switch to Mountain Dulcimer. And we're going to take a look at a tune called The Braze of uh, Tulia Met. This particular tune, <clears throat> excuse me, is so interesting because we start feeling as if we're in um, a B minor place. I'm playing this on a baritone, but a B minor shape. Then we get to the end of the phrase and we're playing a one one one, which is an E minor shape. And then the whole B section feels more like the E minor. <clears throat> 
so you have that short, long, short, long, short, long, but it mixes it up with all of the other things. Good morning, Talon. It's good to see you today. And <clears throat> that tune's called The Braise of Tuliamet. It's one of the one of the several stress bays that I demonstrate and teach on Dulcimer Crossing, and it's also in my Another Jig Will Do book. I have both guitar and uh, the dulcimer, both mountain and hammered dulcimer tunes are in that book and CD. I love this tune type just because it is unusual. That, that just kind of tickles my fancy. Um, to a room full of mountain dulcimer players and we're all playing it. <clears throat> it feels the most like I've heard mountain dulcimer sound like bagpipes <laughs> because those hammer-ons and pull-offs and just this, the regal, um, the, the regal um, kind of pace of it. Just, it's part of Scottish country dance. It's the one, Stress Bay that I was taught by Flora McDonald. Can't remember her last name. She's since passed, but um, she, obviously she's got a historic Scottish name. But she, uh, dulcimer player and uh, Tartan Kirker and a country dance, Scottish country dance teacher who lived in North Carolina. And uh, it's it's just such, I, would, I was teaching and playing this tune for years before I got to see the dance. And there is a little hop in the dance along with that -dum -bum -ba -ba -dum -bum, which is really fun now jim you're asking would i say it starts on the the four minor chord or it changes between b minor and e minor that's one of those judgment calls that i don't know what the best way it is to describe it you like to talk about crooked tunes timing wise i think this is one of those tunes it's kind of ambiguous um i just it's got a key signature when I've seen it, it's got a key signature. It looks like D in the sharps and flats, or, you know, two sharps, which suggests B minor, except we have the we have the E minor when we get to the end. So it just may be it skips the C, so we can't tell if it's a C sharp or a C C natural. So it's one of those um, less than full scale tunes. So maybe it's pentatonic. I haven't looked at that. It might be, but it leaves out the seven step, so it doesn't commit itself. And there are a whole group of tune types that do that. So they aren't gonna behave according to um, the the Western harmonic um rules of you know keys don't belong old time music doesn't belong in keys <laughs> keys are for chromatic music that's something that was developed after we had all the steps in them um, it's a modal tune but it's a confusing modal tune <clears throat> this is one of the things that did confuse me when i first started playing mountain dulcimer because i was that's the only place i'd heard of modal things i'd heard of aeolian harps before which is a harp that is is string strung in a place where the wind can blow it because the god the Greek god Aeolus was the god of the wind, 
and they figured if we can create a harp and the wind blows through it, that'll vibrate and it creates the sound. So Aeolus is playing the harp then. Um, and I, I know when I first found out about that, it was I was reading about Greek mythology when I was in uh, junior high school, but that's also the time you can read about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, <laughs> which became a Disney movie. But I was reading the book because that's the guy I am. I like the books first. Sometimes I don't like the movie. Sometimes I do. But um, they ended up in some caves in France that had an alien harp in it that was a little eerie and scary. Anyway, so back out of that rabbit hole, the, the tunes that are old are modal because they use what they use. But some of them are not completely, they don't fall completely within the mode, meaning they don't use all the notes that are available in the mode. Which means when I was looking at um, the McSpadden um, 4 and 20 book, which was one of the first ones I got, um, which had several different tune tunings and it used all the modal names for the tunings because it was from the era before the late 80s when everybody decided we're not going to talk about that anymore and acknowledge that we have frets that go all the way across so we can play both we can play modally and we can play with chords. Um, there were some tunes that were listed that I knew like Scarborough Fair or a Shady Grove is, is an example. It's a modal tune because it uses the flat note below do. See? So some people put that in Aeolian, some people put it in Dorian kind of tunings. The thing it is, is this got the flatted step below Do. It does never commit itself to the use of the third. So it's not really major or minor, which is why then later on, um, I remember Karen Mueller is one of the people in the Grace family, uh, when and Paul Grace, when they were traveling with their daughters, um, Ellie, and um, Leela, they would do a new, and Karen Mueller did this too, a new Joe Clark, I mean, new Shady Grove, which would be with major chord supporting it, but the melody still worked. <laughs> so it's very interesting when you, when you look at, there's always a group, there's, it's not going to be clear. It's not going to be neat because it's humans. <laughs> we are humans and we like, we like uh, bending things and we like, pushing on the edges of envelopes and thinking outside of boxes and things like that. And there's always a group of us that are trying to group things in boxes. You know, what are you going to do? It's the way it is. I think it's the joy of being human. It's the joy of life. But these tunes are so regal because um, like uh, Brockenlohm, which is that one I was just playing. I forgot. I think I forgot to tell you that. Bum, ba, ba, dum, ba, ba, dum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, ba, dum, ba, bum, it just it just sounds regal. And Scottish country dancing is uh, an all get dressed up affair. It also has some hopping and things like that. But this is where you put on your best kilt. If you're a fella, if you're a woman, you put on your best tartan with your sashes and and uh, your white blouse. I don't know the Scottish name for blouse. Um, you might even dance it in your trues. which is the old name for trousers. But um, I just like these tunes, and they're a wonderful piece of the, the Celtic tradition. Um, speaking of that kind of thing, I do want to share, share a screen with you. Because to continue in the celebration of the Celtic thing, tomorrow night I'm doing a concert for the end of 
March, March 31st, uh, another jig will do a dulcimer celebration. And this music just sings and plays so well on dulcimers. I'm going to have some guitar in there too, but I'm going to be playing that show. It's at 7 p.m. Central, which is 6 Mountain, uh, 5 Pacific, and 8 p.m. Eastern. And this will be with online concert thing. And I'll put the, the link to where you can get tickets and get access to there. Um, as always, my patrons on Patreon get access to the archive recording later. That's also, it's possible that you can download the archive as well uh, for, as a tip reward. That takes a few days to get it up there. But that's coming tomorrow night. So I'm working on that. And then I'm also very excited. This is not something that you can come to, but I have not been able to be in person with any young children. And for the first time, I get to do that this Saturday. Because uh, Music Together in the north end of Boise, um, Andrea has invited me to come and sub for her. She and her family are, are uh, taking a, a week away, and I get to sub for this the, the first time in over two years. So I'm looking forward to that. That's a, that's something that's on my my horizon. Here's another thing that I want to uh, let you remind you about, and that is my spring classes. Oops, you want to see this side. My spring classes, which begin next Monday, April 4th, are open for registration right now. I've got a Jazz It Up for Mountain Dulcimer class, a Jazz It Up for Hammer Dulcimer class, arranging popular tunes, and these are uh, arrangements from my first 50 songs you should play on the Mountain Dulcimer for, um, for Hal Leonard. And um, we've, done, we've gone through a couple of rounds of these, but we'll focus on the ones that needed, how, how do I approach this tune because it has an arranging question in it that I've got to deal with for my Dulcimer. Guitar Joy is working on your finger style uh, skills using Beethoven's Ode to Joy, 30 different exercises. And in that class in a month, we cover all 30. And then playing bluegrass on the mountain dulcimer. And here is where you can sign up for those classes. Um, registration closes this weekend so that I can get everything ready there. And also coming up, Next month, we have we have some great workshops that are coming up. Next month, Heidi Mueller is going to, or Heidi Muller is from uh, my neighbor here in uh, Oregon, is going to be talking about how you can use your mountain dulcimer as a songwriting partner. So if you've ever wondered how to do that, or if you do that and want some tips, or you're thinking, I might like to try that, or my dulcimer has been suggesting some ideas to me, this is a workshop. It'll be on Thursday, April 21st at 5 p.m. Mountain. It'll be, it's one of our monthly live workshop at Dulcimer Crossing. And uh, I will be there for Hammer Dulcimer um, translation if you're a Hammer Dulcimer player and interested in writing songs. The following month, Colin Beasley from Mississippi is going to be here and talking about hand independence playing melody and harmony together on the Hammer Dulcimer. He's a very exciting player. And uh, we're tickled that he gets to be here as well. And then June, Lorinda uh, Jones is going to be here to help us find the form you love in our music, which means looking at the song forms as we're playing them as an aid to learning the tunes. And we've got a great schedule for the rest of the year. In fact, we're working on next year's schedule right now. And those are uh, things that are available to people who are workshop members with no extra cost. So if you join at the workshop level, you get access to that workshop, plus all the archives of our past workshops and our future ones as they come. But if you just want to purchase one, an a la carte ticket just for that day, you click on these links and that's how you do that. And one more thing to highlight. 
It's not until May, but now is the time to be signing up for things. I'm excited. I'm the artistic director for the Berkeley Dulcimer Gathering. And for our third year, we were the first to go online. This will be our third year online. We are excited to have Thomasina Levy be our our uh, headlining Hammer, Mountain Dulcimer teacher, joined by Dave Haas and Kay Bolin and Aaron May Lewis, and Dusty Thorburn and DJ Hamorris and Rob Brereton. Laura Devine Burnett is going to be our song uh, leader when we, we play in a jam session. And I get to be the Hammer Dulcimer headliner this year, and I'm tickled that Patty Emelot from Southern California is also going to teach Hammer Dulcimer. This is a Saturday, Friday night and Saturday concerts. Um, and you can find this here at berkeleydulcimergathering.com. And if you join the Facebook page, you'll get all the updates that go along with that. Uh, Friday and Saturday concerts, all day Saturday workshops that, that are 75 minutes long, a little more time to get into, the, into what's going on. And then Sunday we have um, two hour workshops. So that lets us spend even more time with what we're doing. So we've got Strathspeys. We've got all the Celtic music that I'll be playing tomorrow night. We will. We have a lot of great things coming up. Um, it's time to start thinking about what are going to be the new topics in the in the coming month. And so I welcome you to. You can write them here in the in the comment section. You can write to me, Steve at Dulce, at uh, OwlMountainMusic.com, and uh, have some some great ideas that have been suggested already that we'll be looking at. But I look forward to seeing you in the coming live streams as well. Um, I wish you the best in your playing and in your exploring, and I look forward to hearing from you. But for now, I'm going to say farewell.